All right. Okay. Here we go. Right. I'm going to jump right into it. You build, you have built a regenerative radio circuit of some kind and it doesn't work. And you're absolutely sure you have the exact parts and you got it wired correctly. Now I'm going to tell you two of the tricks. And these are tricks that no one else tells you in the video. They just do this. Ooh, look, I can turn the knob. I can get a station. Let me tell you, after years of building stuff, here's one of the tricks. It'll, you'll, you'll never figure it out. Okay? Now, let me get this in the frame. Let's just say uh, this, this is the, the uh, tickler winding. And then uh, I got to double check this. I'm not absolutely sure. Well, anyway, these, this is the antenna winding. And this is the oscillator winding. And this is part of the oscillator that goes to the tuning capacitor. And that, th these terms set the frequency the radio is going to work at. And if this is the tickler, it sure looks like the tickler. This tickler uh, sends signal um, in phase back to the circuit to make it oscillate okay now if this is the wrong amount of turns it'll still work if this is too far away it's got to be pretty far away it won't work what will stop this thing dead in its tracks if you reverse the windings or wind this in a different direction than this and you're going to like what okay an oscillator is basically an amplifier with feedback if you take a, an audio amp with a microphone and you bring the microphone near the speaker, you'll hear feedback. It'll go into oscillation. That's what the regenerative set wants. And you want to be able to control that with the regener re regenerative control. Okay? So if your radio doesn't oscillate, uh, first thing you want to do is put a black mark on the wire and the spot it's been wired to. And then unsolder them and reverse them. Don't just unsolder these because you could put them back the same way, the wrong way again. But if I was to turn this on and get it working, and then uh, basically unsolder these two wires that go up to the coil, there's only three turns, and I was to reverse them, this thing would not work. Okay? That's one of the tricks. Now, in the case of a kit, you might wind the direction of the wire the wrong way, but you put the wires in the right place and it doesn't oscillate and you pull your hair out and you're like why why me the lord why me now the other thing the other trick that no one else will tell you this is a charles kitchen and he's got a lm 386 um uh audio amp in here so it'll work with a set of um um not gopro oh man a uh, sony headphones uh Walkman headphones or iPod headphones, okay, which iPhone headphones, Walkman headphones, any of those small little uh, personal headphones, they're low impedance. Remember this, low impedance, only a few turns of wire, good high fidelity, but you need um, a IC to drive them. You can't use those kinds of headphones in a single one transistor regenerative circuit and I know you've done it I know right now there's a person out there that has built a regenerative circuit it won't work they have all the wires in the right places they have all the right values okay and uh, it just doesn't work and I had that happen to me and that's because I went to Burger Electronics Watsessing Road and Bloomfield Avenue way back in the 50s with my birthday money and I was building a regenerative um, CB receiver, and I, I, I laid it on a piece of wood. I, um, I used the contact cement to, to, to mount the tuning caps, and it looked like a beautiful thing, and it wouldn't work. And because Cy Berger gave me a, a pair of headphones, or a, a, a earphone from a transistor radio, and it was 8 ohms worth of, of copper in it, low impedance. That's all you have to understand is not enough wire. And it doesn't have enough resistance. So the circuit, the bias goes all off on the transistor circuit because you don't have enough resistance or impedance or enough windings, no matter how you want to word it. So if you're building a one transistor or one FET 
uh, regenerative radio, when they say high impedance headphones or 2000 ohm headphones, you better have the right headphones. If you plug in something else, it won't work. But Charles Kitchen, what he did with his was he put in LM386. 386? Sounds right. Uh, in, in the circuit. And that's your headphone buffer. All right? And that's one of the things that you'll never get it to work. The one transistor circuit or one FET circuit, and you don't have the right headphones, it's not going to work. And the same with if you build a tube circuit, you put in a, an 8 ohm headphones, it's not going to work. You might get an indication of uh, something overheating with the tube set because the, the voltage is higher. But I can guarantee you right now, there are finished regenerative sets sitting that don't work because the person used the wrong headphones. And there are headphones that have film more that you can still buy them surplus. Uh, they're called like 2000 ohm headphones. And they look identical to a little uh, earbud thing. But there's more windings in there. Higher impedance changes the bias of the transistors so they will work. Now, I want to also repeat, uh, in this case, this, this is a, uh, a, a control. Let's just say this is a 30, 35 picofarads with a, a, a 15 in series with it. So effectively, this control, or say a 10, is 10 picofarads. So you can take a bigger capacitor, tuning cap, and put series capacitor in there that's smaller, and you can now be within spec of what your circuit calls for. The same with, uh, this is the regenerative control. They want to see, say, 50 picofarads here. So you put 100 in series. 100 and 100 in series gives you 50. Okay? That's one of the tricks you can use. But this, this circuit, uh, I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is now what can go wrong. Now, I tell you, you get yourself a piece of aluminum, and you build over an aluminum chassis. You run your ground for your circuit to this metal chassis. You take a ground along with your antenna and hook it to this chassis. And you won't get any hand capacitance effect. Okay? You won't be getting the old theremin. Woo, 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 woo. Okay? But if you get the regenerative circuit to oscillate and to pick up a station, you're 90% the way there. And a lot of people use wooden boards. And you can get that tin foil that sticks on. Uh, let's see if I got some here. You're not supposed to walk away when you're doing the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This stuff here, if you use a wooden box, um, it's for around used around air conditioners. It's double sticky or sticky. You peel this back, it sticks. This is aluminum, and you can use this for shielding. So you can turn um, a wooden box into an L-shaped shielded chassis mount or yeah chassis okay so i've covered the fact that you gotta have the right headphones uh with the kitchen it's got a buffer amplifier you can use almost anything okay but if you're using a single circuit uh it, it's it's based the old single transistor circuits are based on tube circuits a tube circuit if you use it one tube regenerative circuit it's going to need a high impedance headphones and they're brand Easter. You'll see them on eBay there. And there are modern versions of it. And you can use a miniature transformer to give you the higher impedance. But just remember, if you don't use a high impedance headphones or don't understand, your circuit's not going to work. And then again, with your, you know, like if this is the antenna, I really can't check, check track it real quick here. Which one's which? But anyway... If the, let's just say this is the regenerative winding, and these are where they're, they're mounted. With, I used uh, little clips. Yeah, the, uh, this is the feedback here. The orange is the feedback. Well, anyway, uh, put a put a black dot on your wire and on the board where where it went to. Unsolder it and reverse it, and the circuit should oscillate. And if you don't know that, and you you never you won't get it to work. You you'll pull your hair out. And now in the Charles kitchen. Uh, you'll see the circuit. It's everywhere. A lot of people. How come you don't you don't include a link? Blah 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 blah. That's because if you're going to build a radio, uh, you got to bring something to the table, like having the intelligence to look for the schematic on YouTube or um, on Google. Okay. But I'm telling you the two tricks. Uh, you basically have the wrong headphones, 
for a single transistor circuit or single two, or your winding needs, the wires need to reverse on the tickler. It's called a tickler coil. It, it, cre it creates feedback like the microphone and the audio amp. Okay? And if you got it reversed, it won't oscillate. And some of the really good circuits in radio electronics, they tell you if the circuit doesn't oscillate, reverse the wires on your tickler. And I'm going to tell you to mark the wire before you reverse it. Because if it jumps out of your hand or whatever, guess what? you'll put it back the wrong way again. And I had somebody do that to me. I told them to reverse the tickler winding, and they put it back the same way a second time. Yeah, they're out there. And uh, I want to tell you now, I'm doing this, this video backwards. I want to tell you, someone mentioned me about, that, uh, that Armstrong invented the regenerative set. Yeah, his name was Edwin Armstrong. He also uh, created the uh, FM uh, receiving system. And um, he killed himself. Go read, go, go read what the, uh, Sarnoff of RCA did to him. Okay, and the wife got a settlement of a million dollars. Go read up on it. A regenerative set has layers upon layers upon layers. And I built so many of them over the years. Now, that circuit I built for my birthday that didn't work because the guy gave me the wrong earphones. Years later, when I moved here, I found out all your popular electronics are free online. The old issues. I went and I found the schematic. And I went in my parts bins. Here they are. And in that parts bins over here, let me get my hand over here. In those parts bin were the exact parts, the actual parts, of the regenerative radio that didn't work. And I took a piece of uh, PVC board instead of the uh, uh, paneling from the kitchen. My, not Charles' kitchen, my actual kitchen. My dad put paneling up. I cut myself a little piece using a utility knife. And uh, I built the radio on it. It was perfect. It just didn't work because I had the wrong headphones or earphone. All right. Now I moved here. It bothered me. I found the parts in my parts bins. I brought them out. I found the schematic and I built it and it received uh, uh, CB radio. It also picked up my uh, remote controls, my old um, craft units. Okay. And I wish that that circuit would have worked for me when I was a kid. Okay. But like I said, the two things that will put the kibosh on your regenerative radio is if you have the winding for the tickler reversed, the windings, or the connections are reversed, okay? You have to be in phase with the oscillator section, okay? The feedback has to be in phase. That's why it oscillates. So that, you got to get that right, that winding, and then the right headphones. And those are the two big tricks. And if you watch other people's videos, they don't tell you this. Everybody assumes you know. And then when you put yourself up there on YouTube and you start getting people emailing you, I don't want, I got to regenerate, I tried everything, it just won't work. You know what? I feel bad for those guys because I was in that position. Birthday money, laid it out on a piece of paneling, it looked great, okay? And uh, ran on a 9 volt battery and did nothing. And I was, I was disappointed. My father would always say this one thing, you know, a lot of times there's a mistake in the schematic and the next month they'll in the back of the magazine no so i did i went and got the next month i looked in the back the whole time i was set up for that okay now cyberger sold tv repair parts replacement parts i would go into him with my schematic and my parts list in the magazine and he'd go through and he he'd pick out really good substitutes but being a nice guy instead of reading what earphone it required he found one and he was like Happy birthday. And he gives me the earphone and set me up, set me up. And I wish I could send a message back through time to myself to make that circuit work. I think that's it. All right, that's it. I hope I didn't overmodulate. Arr, I get really excited.